Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 show, chapter two. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is episode 243. Yeah, man, shout out to everybody who tuned in yesterday. And I'm here again off the ground, about to interview one of my fellas. Good friend of mine. Been knowing this cat for a minute, like over 10 years. <laughs> and we used to work together too. So this is first time on the show. I wanted to make history. I think I'm his first interview. Hopefully I am. So I wanted to um, bring him on here. He's a good dude. He box and everything like that. <laughs> what's up, what's up? What's up, my <laughs> brother? Man, what's good with you, dog? Man, I'm blessed, bro. How are you, man? Man, I can't complain, bro, man. Just been enjoying the success. How That's you been, good. though? That's good, bro. It's good to see you pushing with it, bro. I'm happy for you, man. Man, thanks, man. I'm happy for you, man, you know. I see you still doing your thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Just just trying to stay consistent, man, and, and keep it alive, man. Yeah, that's all we can do, bro. Yeah. You know, I was just explaining to people, man, that um, like we used to work together and right, shit, right. like a long, long time ago, and I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 you still at Covenant, bro? Yeah, bro, I'm still there. I, 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 it's a career, bro. It's a career, man. Most most people ain't got that, man. It's a blessing just to be able to, you know what I'm saying, make a living and be able to pay your bills, you know what I'm saying? So that's a oh, blessing no. in itself. Oh, no doubt, man. So I'm doing what you used to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I wanted to get you on here, bro, to – Cause basically, to know about you and everything, you know, I know a lot about you, but the people don't know about you like that. So, right, right. So I wanted to, you know, ask you a few questions, and mm -hmm. and you you can pretty much, you know, answer it best way you want to. <laughs> yeah, bro. So, um, tell the people like where you from and like how you grew up and everything like that. Uh, Saginaw, Michigan, from uh, Buena Vista. I went to pretty much, you know, all BV schools, you know what I'm saying, coming up all the way from Henry Dora all the way up to, you know, Buena Vista High School. So mostly me and all my Buena Vista people, we, we all locked in, we family, you know. And I just come from a pretty good, you know what I'm saying, loving it. And genuine family, you know, they always showed me a lot of love and, you know, introduced me to God. And that's just what I try to keep going in my life right now and uh, introduce to my daughter as well. You know. Oh, yeah, man. And I wanted to tell you congratulations on that, too. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, because I remember what, what we used to talk about when we hung around each other, man. And I remember just you know, wanted to, you know, find love and just settle down and start a family and everything. So right. I'm happy that she was able to do that because it's difficult nowadays to really find somebody who really mess with you tough. So congratulations to all of that, man. And and yeah, man, I had, um, had your dad yesterday. Really? I didn't you, yeah, I didn't know you was a junior. Yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually the third. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually the third. He the he the junior. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So we we just we just we just try to keep the legacy going, you know. Hopefully hey, one of these days I might be blessed, you know what I'm saying, to to have a fourth, you know. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And it's, it's and it's really important, bro. Like to to have black fathers, man, because society make it seem like they don't exist or. When they do exist, they're not in their kids' lives and stuff. Right, not right. even in their adult 
children lives and and we need to you know destroy that narrative because yeah. even though it's a lot of single mothers out here it doesn't have to be like that and it's still exactly. man that still step up it, it's, it's definitely something that you know need to be put on display more and you know needs to be acknowledged more i feel like you know the way to learn is you know leading by example and if we don't ever see no good examples or you know never had no good examples to follow by then you know we won't have nobody to learn from you know so we definitely need to put fathers you know on a you know what i'm saying just on a on a on a bigger pedestal you know and just so that they appreciate it more the whole yeah, the man. whole the whole women thing these days is you know to try to do everything independent and try to raise a child independent which i mean that's cool but the child is never going to you know succeed from a situation like that so yeah i feel you and i don't know if you remember my stepfather you know that truck that used to be at my old house yeah 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 he been been gone for five years now really i'm sorry to hear that bro yeah thanks and oh man it's just crazy because my biological father he's still alive mm -hmm. and i try to let him back in but it didn't work out right and i hated him to be honest with you i i couldn't stand his ass like because it was just so much that i felt like i was cheated because he wasn't around to teach me these things so but by the grace of god I'm not that type of person to hold grudges and everything. So I'm grateful for what I found out. And I apply that into my life because when it's my turn, I'm going to make sure that I'm there every day right, as right, much right. as possible. But yeah, man, um, to update you on my life, you know, I got a nephew now. So he's three. And it's cool because I had our girls at first, you know, our nieces and shit. So when I had a nephew, man, I was just like, yes, you know what I'm saying? Finally, because it's just certain things that I can't, you know, want to pass down to his sisters one day. So hopefully he um, will want to, you know, do the media thing or whatever he wants to do, man. I just was supporting 100%, but it's just been cool, man, just because I ain't really had a um a toddler around me like that in so long. So it's just cool just to watch kids grow up and just realize that it's a privilege. It's a blessing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely. And it's all about, you know, passing that, that positivity down. And, you know, like how you touched on, like what your father did to you, you know, that that's his mistake and his choice, you know what I'm saying, by you having just a good perception at it and, you know, not seeing it one way and having hatred, that's something going to let you produce more love into your nephew, you know, because you're not having all that hatred and stuff holding you back from that, so. Of course not, man. So I tell everybody all the time, Everything is a choice, and I always just express everything that I'm going through because I don't want to be those type of people that act like that I had it good. I, I never had it good, but I had it the way that it was written for me when it was pretty much planned out, and not just all our lives that, you know, we go through things in order to learn and in order to grow, and I really – mature i'm still silly and everything like that but i have more discipline i have more self-control i have more um ambition than i have ever have and yeah and then it just what you on the other hand um i know that you know you was putting boxing on hold for a little bit because you know you had to pay the bills and stuff at one, once a time ago Right, right. But, I, but I'm just glad that you got back into it, man, because you was always a damn 
heavy puncher even when we was fucking playing with each other. <laughs> and it gets me, so, you know what I'm saying? Go 30 seconds. I'm like, you know, like, damn, like, they don't hurt. Then, then like, five, ten minutes later, I'm like, damn, man, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely it's definitely a struggle, you know, getting your career started off, especially you know with this boxing and stuff like that. I mean, I fight professional, I get paid, but you know, it's just a few thousand dollars a fight, which I I rarely fight every few months, you know, so mm -hmm. it's not really enough to to pay the bills. So I still got to balance working, you know, taking care of my child. And you know, trying to balance my career at the same time, so it is tough. And sometimes I do have to take a break and focus on working and focus on paying bills because you know we all gotta live, and that's what comes first. You know, so it's just an even balance of being able to chase your dream, able to to provide as well too. Oh yeah, no doubt, bro. I get it. I get it, and it just majority of us really don't um, understand what happens behind the scenes. So, right. so how's your like regimen, like your workout thing? You know, I ain't go, you know, want you to ex tell all your secrets and say it like that, but uh, just go along with and how you prepare for a fight. Like, what's like the first things you do and and stuff like that. Uh, well, the first thing that I do, I try to make sure my strength and conditioning is intact, and that just meaning just going through and all of my leg exercises and strengthening my legs and my arms and my shoulders, and then I go through a few weeks of just cardio, a lot of running probably doing about 15 to 20 miles a week. And then uh, I got my regular boxing gym workout that I do uh, probably about two or three hours a day, uh, about five to six days a week. So with within boxing itself, it's a full-time job, you know. So for, for me to be working and boxing at the same time, it's a lot. And it's a lot. It's, it's very taxing on my body. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, though, man. Like, was it hard, like, when you first um, became professional and stuff like that? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it was real hard. I mean, the I, I believe I think the hardest part of it was just getting a name and developing connections and just getting experience. The hardest part of it was, you know, just handling the business. I've always been self-managed, where, you know what I'm saying, a lot of fighters, they, they, they have managers to take care of their traveling expenses or, you know what I'm saying, setting up their medicals and negotiating fights. I do a, pretty much 100% of the work myself. I negotiate my fights. I set up the travel. I, you know, uh, hire my trainers. Everything is pretty much on me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that that's really the was the difficult part of it for me is just really just getting that knowledge of you know being a manager and being a fighter at the same time and being able to you know train and do the business part of it at the same time. That was the biggest the biggest challenge. Okay. So tell us about your toughest opponent and your toughest fight. My toughest opponent and toughest fight. If you recall. <laughs> I mean, well, I just fought this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And I can say that one was pretty tough because uh, I was battling the flu. I had the flu all week. And, uh, <laughs> I, went, I went up I went, I went, went up in weight. Uh, mm -hmm. So I normally fight at uh, 154 pounds or uh, 147. I walk around at a hundred and sixty two, sixty three. So I normally drop about fifteen to twenty pounds before I get ready to fight. Mm -hmm. But this fight was a little different. Um, I actually had to go up in weight. 
So uh, I had to fight at 168 pounds. And I fought a much bigger guy. He was coming down. He was coming down from 190 pounds to 160. And we weigh in the day before the fight. So when we weigh in the day before the fight, they give us enough time to rehydrate back up to, you know, our natural weight. You know, mm -hmm. so we're about, I was still a 100 natural 60 pounder. He rehydrated back up, you know, to that 190 pounds that he was. So, like I said, that was, that was a difficult fight because I'm, I'm going there probably 20 pounds lighter than the guy, you know, on fight night. So, he was coming there. He was throwing a lot of heavy punches and haymakers and stuff like that. And I just had to stay disciplined and remember to keep my hands up and move my head and use my boxing skills. And I was able to come through with the decision. Even having the flu. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up, bro. Because, you know, that's a, that's, that's a sport that's very, um, I would say, chosen. Everybody yes. is. Everybody can't be a boxer. It's a difference between being a street fighter and being a boxer. Yeah, it, it, it very. Is. I mean, it's a, it's a very grueling sport. Boxing, it, it, it take a lot away from you know. It take a lot away from you know. I can, I can, count numerous of injuries I don't have. You know, mm -hmm. all the way up from you know, uh, eye injuries. To, you know, shoulder injuries, leg injuries, you know, hand injuries, you know, but you just got to keep on fighting through it. Mm. Yeah. Whew. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just the type of person where, like, I, um, like, when I fight, it takes a long period to make me get to that point where I want to fight you. Right, right. To that point, but I'm a lover, man. You know, I always <laughs> had the women. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it definitely got to be something that's in you. It definitely no, no. It, it can't be. This can't be nothing that you force. It, it definitely got to be something that's that's already in you. Yeah, and um, and I and I want you to just really go with um, not fighting while you're angry. Not not using your anger to fight. Do you right, use right. your anger to fight? No, nah, no. Nah, that's that's something that you really can't use is your anger to fight because uh, boxing is a thinking man's game. A lot of people think that, you know, just like I told you, I went up against a guy that was, you know, naturally 190 pounds and I was 130. Mm -hmm. It's a thinking man's game. So whereby a lot of people think it's about being strong and being fast. You can outsmart your opponent. You can make him make moves that, you know, just pretty much force him into a position that where you want him at. It's more so like chess, you know, just forcing your opponent into a position where you want him at and you capitalize on it. That's what boxing is all about. And a lot of people don't know that. It's, 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 it's about the science of it. You know? And that's what I try to perfect when I'm fighting. Okay, and and I remember when you met Ali. How about you explain <laughs> that to me? Man, you know, that's told that's me that like story. So that's that's like one of the, the highlights. That I mean, that is the highlight of my life. I mean, like you got to think, Ali. He he wasn't only a, a, a sports historian, but he was just a historian for our culture. Mm -hmm. You know for the world, for humanity, for, you know, a lot of things that Ali stood for. He was just a, a great person. And I met him probably, I had to be about 10 years old. And um, I went to a boxing trip uh, in, uh, what the hell was that? At? Uh, in Barry and Springs, Michigan. That's where you're from. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a friend that was real close to him, and he ended up going to his house, and he told us that he was there. So we went along for the trip, and he he was just a, he was just a great man. He he told jokes, uh, he was doing magic tricks, and 
just he was just an entertainer. He still was an entertainer, you know, even though he was up in age and he had his health issues, you know, he had the Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. He still was an entertaining and just a kind hearted man. He welcomed us into his home and he hardly even knew us, you know, a gated home. He probably had about probably had about like five houses all on one property. And then he had like a gym, a basketball court, an office. Everything was all on one property. He just welcomed us in with open arms, you know, without even really knowing us. So, That's yeah, good, man. That was definitely That's a great. Cool experience, man. <laughs> yeah, to be next to somebody who met Malcolm X and Sam Cooke. Mm -hmm. Elijah Muhammad, man, that's exactly. That's, exactly. that's dope. <laughs> exactly, man. That's yeah, definitely a, a highlight of my life, man. Yeah, and I just see you going far, bro. I see you being that on Showtime, ESPN. Mm -hmm. Just because you got it, man. You got it. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it, man. I just, uh, I give a walk glory to God, bro, because it's a lot of times that my journey could have been ended short, you know, with this whole boxing career. And, you know, he sustained me. So, uh, what I do is every fight that I have, I always come out, you know, on gospel music, you know, and I try to represent God and just show the people, you know, where my strength come from. And I try to impact the whole crowd. And I feel like that's the best way that I can do it, is come out on gospel music. Man. It actually do work. It actually do work. I actually do touch a lot of people and, you know, able to reach a lot of people throughout that. And that's just what I want to do with my career, is just be able to, you know, represent him some type of way with what I do. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And and I wish you nothing but the best. And, like, do you have any favorite boxing movies? Because, you know, a lot of people watch Rocky. A lot of people watch uh, Undisputed. I think my favorite boxing movie uh, is Southpaw. It came out a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's you dope. seen that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that movie a lot, man. I don't know. You remind me of Omar Epps in the movie Against uh, Against the Ropes. Yeah, Against the Ropes. You seen that before? Uh, I can't say I have. Yeah, you got to check that out. You will see what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a good movie, man. It's, 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 it's really a lot of life lessons in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out, bro. Yeah, because I just I just tell people, um, especially um, my platform is based off mental health and going through depression and going through um, grief, pain, mm -hmm. and this and that. Like, your biggest opponent is yourself. Exactly. And and when I have just embarked these past almost eight years, bro, like um, being able to um ask for help being able to say i'm not okay and being able to just admit that i'm human mm -hmm. and that's the biggest um misconception in society just us as being men is that we like to be tough we don't like to show our emotions we don't like to be um needy and stuff and it's okay to admit when you need help because you're only one man you're only one vessel and right. and i just think that a lot of things can be avoided if we admit that we need help because we all need each other yeah it, it, it ain't never nothing wrong with needing help and uh you can never, you never really can receive nothing if you always uh, too prideful, and you know your perception is that you want to be a macho man and do everything on your own, and you don't need help. You know that that that's all we on this earth for, 
if then nobody need help, then there'd only be one person on the earth, you know. We all need each other to, you know, make everything go around and that's the way God meant it to be. Yeah. And I'm just grateful just for my second chance and and obviously yours and just want to make it just count this time and and that's why I just have on um, my show because like when you box and everything yeah. I really have inspired so many people exactly <laughs> and it's funny because my mom bro like she watched this a lot, you know, and and she was just really um, amazed, and she just asked me what made what made you want to do it, and I just told her like it was always in me. I just had to find the right moment. <coughs> I just love your consistency, your consistency, bro, and how you just keep on going strong, keep on pushing, bro. You've been at it for about, about like uh, almost for like two years now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been, you been going strong for a while, bro. I've been paying attention to you, man. And thanks, man. So, you know, I always like paying attention to you and shit, you know, because I know you don't live here anymore. So, I was just hoping, like, man, whatever he, whatever he, um, is doing, I, I just hope he doing what he's good at. Exactly. And and that you're happy, man, because. It just a lot of people go astray and begin to, you know, become average when they was just special and mm -hmm. then they became average and stayed average. And I'm glad that you're not staying average. And, and I know that you have um, a mission after this boxing thing. I know you just, you, you're using this right now to, uh, you know, get your foot in the door, but I know that you destined for greater things. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, besides the boxing, uh, I do auto collision as well. Uh, I got love for cars. I went mm -hmm. to school uh, to Lincoln Tech, and uh, I graduated my with my associate's degree in uh, 2017. It ain't really nothing that I uh, put on the back burner or nothing like that. It's just that uh, I know with athletics and especially professional athletics, you gotta you gotta cash in, you know, when you got your youth. You know, I'm I'm finna turn 32 this year, so I want to box at least until I'm about 38. Mm -hmm. So I probably got about a good six and a half years to push through and you know make happen what I want to happen while I still you know got my body able with me. So that's all that I wanted to do is just focus on this boxing thing right now. And then after that, I'm, I'm going to tap into my auto collision career and uh, take off with that as well. So I, I tried to try to try to plan it out the right way. Yeah, sounds, sounds like you already got it planned out, man. <laughs> Really ain't much to to play in. You you got your mind made up, so that's good. Cause I know a lot of people who in our profession, um, they don't have a exit. An exit at all, oh. and, and it's pretty much a lot of people get trapped into. Uh, you fight, you spend your money, then you fight again. And you fight again. And we're getting caught up in that trap. That's how a lot of boxers, you know, like Ali and uh, other fighters, don't end up brain dead and, you know, mm -hmm. not able to have all their faculties. It's because they have focused so much on boxing to the point where they depend on it and they need it. And a lot of promoters and a lot of matchmakers, uh, they know that. So they use that to their advantage. And a lot of fighters get abused. So you definitely got to be able to uh, to know how to protect yourself and to have an exit plan. And sometimes I learn how to say no because I don't even been, you know, taken advantage of. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 they do it to anybody. They do anything that they can just to make a dollar. You just really a dollar to them. You don't, they don't even look at you as a person. Yeah, I learned that too, man. That just in any any field, you know what I'm saying? Because because the devil will never show up as your enemy. The devil will show up as your friend first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that so quickly, bro. And and I took a lot of losses as well, but I just keep going. Yeah, that's 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 what it's all about. It's just having that fortitude, having that mental fortitude. I mean, I think, uh, well, I know all of us get close to the challenges because you know what I'm saying. The devil is real, and he's gonna mm-hmm. do all of it. He's gonna test all of it. So everybody has these same challenges. It's all about those individuals who can you know keep pushing and have that mental fortitude to you know keep going and not give up. Yeah, and and also, man, I wanted to ask you, what was just like the hardest thing that you had to learn just with boxing? Um, I mean, you went with like like the conditioning part, but is it hard to just stay consistent? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, the hardest thing is the consistency and, you know, the discipline. That That's that's one of the hardest things, you know, uh, mm-hmm. just uh, giving up a lot of things, you know, partying, drinking, smoking. I mean, it's just a lot of things that you just really can't do. You got to, you know, stay consistent to your sport. So it just... That's, that's probably the hardest part of it, just just the discipline part of it. Okay, bro. Well, I ain't going to hold you up much longer, man. I know that you got a busy day ahead of you tomorrow because I do. I got to go to work. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. I go front. But, yeah, man, I enjoyed this, bro. Man, this is I dope. enjoyed you too, bro, man. It was good to see you, man. Good to talk to you. Good to be on the show, man. I just hope you keep on keep on pushing and keep on growing, man. Man, likewise, my brother. And anytime you want to come back, man, and give us an update sometime like six months from now, man, you, you good, bro. All right, definitely, bro, definitely. All right, man, you take care of yourself, man, and have a good night. All right, bro, God bless. Peace.